Hey, Abby, could you close that one blind in front of your table, please? This one right here, please, ma'am. And we say good morning to you. We welcome you aboard. We're live again at Chick-fil-A and the Crossing is North Johnson and the Tom Taylor Sports Show ready to go. We got college football. We've got pro football. We got the National Hockey League. We got Ronda Rousey. I don't know who Ronda, I do know who Ronda Rousey is. We'll talk about her. She got her feathers kicked around the other night and made a lot of money doing it. So we're going to talk about her coming up here in a little while. We will hear from Tennessee men's basketball coach Rick Barnes. A very disappointing night last night for the, for the Tennessee men's basketball team. We will also hear from Dabo Sweeney, you know, the big hot topic now in college football. And we've talked about this the last couple of weeks about these guys not wanting to play and, and stepping away from their team when it comes to a bowl. Dabo Sweeney's got a comment about that. So we'll talk about that as well. We're also going to be joined by our buddy Greg Salyer of the Major League Baseball Update. There's a lot going on in Major League Baseball spring training right around the corner. And we will also... Uh, be joined by our buddy Dave Angie from the Johnson City Press. All that coming up here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. We're live here in the window. Chick fil A, like a uh, like a parrot in the window here. That doesn't even sound right. Sit like a parrot in the window. So back to the studio we'll go with our producer extraordinaire, Mr. Ben Foy. Good morning, sir. How are you? Yep, it is. It's... There you go. That's awesome. You're exactly right. How many did you have on the show this morning? How many calls? Forty-two. How about that? So, again, we're live at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Uh, we always start our show by dedicating to the man who hung on the cross, and today will be, of course, no different. Our verse for the day goes as follows, out of the book of Numbers in the Old Testament. I will bless you and keep you. I will make my face to shine upon you. I will turn my face towards you and give you peace. There you go. That's the thought for the day. We've got cold weather coming. Got some snow in the higher elevations. I'm not sure we'll get here in the Tri-Cities. We've got snow coming for sure in the higher elevations. Back to the studio we go. Our buddy Ben Foy. Ben, what's going on with weather, my friend? I will never ask you for a weather forecast ever again when you give me those kind of reports. Four degrees on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday morning, I should say. Yeah, I'm not just in your car, in your body too, so, because they're going to be cold. You check the antifreeze in, the, in your pipes as well as the car's pipes, so. There you go. And it's going to moderate, but again, it is going to be cold, and that's uh, that's what they're calling for, and that's what we got to live with. So, unfortunately, Tom Taylor Sports Show, we're live. Get a Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Again, cranking up for lunch here. Again, on this Wednesday, hump day, January the 4th, 2017. There we go. Hit the bell, and so lots going on. And we're going to uh, jump in here and take off and run with it here in just a second. I do want to remind you tomorrow we're going to be a champion Chevrolet. Broadcasting live with the Bristol Motor Mile in Johnson City. Monday we'll be at Hardy's on Market Street here in Johnson City. Uh, last month we were in Colonial Heights, and so this this month uh, Shannon said we're going to go. And I said, we go where you tell us. She said, you will go <laughs> to Hardy's on Market Street in Johnson City. I said, yes, ma'am, I will be there with bells on. So we'll be there with her coming up on Monday. Uh, next Friday will be our first food city of the new year. And we got three in a row. We'll be at Food City in Jonesboro next Friday. So we're all over the place, and that's the way we like it here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. We're live at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City on a cold day, a cool day like today. And even colder, as Ben said, coming in uh, this weekend, this cold front. Good time come in and get a big old bowl of chicken noodle soup or that tortilla chicken soup. It's got a little zip to it. But the chicken noodle soup will set you free. It's good, good chicken noodle soup. Kind of like the kind Grandma made. So 
Love me some chicken noodle soup here at Chick-fil-A at the Crossings in North Johnson City. Yes, they do. If you have your, uh, exactly right, good point. If you got a Chick-fil-A calendar, the month of January, your first freebie for the new year is in your calendar. And uh, in the back of the calendar gives you a break out of month by month what's going to be free. And so he's right, good point. This is the first free month for the new 2017 calendar, which they sold all, of course, here at Food City. All right, let's start, I mean, at uh, Chick-fil-A. Let's talk about Food City real quick. Got a brand-new sale out in uh, Cell Paper M. They're now selling the Ripley's Ultimate Fun Pass, eight great attractions, more benefits on sale through March the 7th at all food cities. The lowest price on season tickets will be through your food city. And so they are on sale now at all food cities. Also, some of the specials have come out for this week. The paper came out today, good through next Tuesday. The Lean Cuisine Entrees, five for $10 at Food City. Bistro Deli Classic Smoked Turkey Breast, $4.99 a pound. Food Club Chunky Soup, 99 cents a can. Also, you got Tide laundry detergent this week at Food City. Buy one, get one free. Also, out of the produce department, blueberries. Ooh, I love having the blueberry pancakes. Can you make pancakes? Can you? Abby can make pancakes. Abby can do anything. I'm telling you, Abby, this young lady from Chick fil A, she's awesome. And so she can make blueberry pancakes and she likes to eat blueberry pancakes. So there you go. Well, no, I know you like to eat blueberry pancakes. I've been out with you. I, Running with you, you eat about anything put on the plate in front of you. So, But Abby's a little bit more refined, but she likes blueberry pancakes. I don't know if I can get her on the camera or not. Let's see if she can. I see it. Wave, wave at us, Miss. There you go. She's on her break, and she loves blueberry pancakes. So we got blueberries on sale. Buy one, get one free at Food City this week. Also out of the produce department. Good time for citrus for the old body to help build up the immune system here in the wintertime. You've got the navel oranges, the red grapefruit. Buy one, get one free at your local food city. And the sale price price is good through next Tuesday. And the sale paper came out today at Food City for all 106 stores across the region. It's the Tom Taylor Sports Show. We'll take a quick break. We'll jump right back in. And we will, coming out of our first break, we'll, uh, again, in the of the hour, we'll be joined by Greg Salyer, the Major League Baseball update. Lots going on in baseball. Spring training, not that far away. So when Ben gives me temperature readings in the single digits on Sunday night, that tells me when I'm here in spring training and the players are in the winter workouts, that tells me spring training is right around the corner. And that means spring's not that far from here. Although, quite frankly, we've had pretty mild weather here up to this point. But I wish it'd stay that way. But we don't control that. The good Lord does. It's a good thing we'd mess that up, too, if we controlled it. So cold weather's coming. But, again, baseball, spring training, not that far away. He'll be here at the top of the hour. It's a little spring training and a little baseball. Some movement right now in the off season. Some of the teams. And we'll hear about that from Greg. Also... Right around 12.30 this afternoon, Dave Angie joins us from the Johnson City Press, talking all kinds of sports, and we'll get his take on this Lane Kiffin debacle going on. He's leaving, now he's not leaving. Saban says, oh yeah, you're leaving. So, And he says, no, I'm not leaving. So, so it has become uh, somewhat of a power struggle in Tuscaloosa. I'm going to tell you right now who's going to win that. He should be smarter than that. But... Lane apparently ain't that bright, but I'm going to go ahead and tell him. Lane, if you're listening to me, buddy, don't know what you are, probably not. But let me give you, uh, uh, what, four words. Nick is going to win. So you may just want to go ahead and pack your bags and head to Florida because he wants to come back and be in the press box for the national championship game on Monday night. Nick says no. No, he's already said he's going to go ahead and leave, so that's what he's going to do. So stay tuned. It's going to get interesting. Yeah, well. We'll get him a ring, but he, we'll mail it to him down in Florida, I guess is probably what you're saying. So, And he deserves a ring. He's been the offensive coordinator for a very, very good football team. So, you know, he did leave, and now his latest quote is, if I want to stay and coach the game, I would have stayed and coached the game. He said, I, it was my choice to leave, not Saban's. Okay, so now you've left. Now you want to come back and be in the press box for the national championship game. It's uh, the old, you can't have your cake and eat it too. So, uh, or the old saying, you made your bed, you got to lie in it. Or... Maybe even more specifically, Nick's going to win. So, uh, Lane, you need to move on. But anyway, we'll talk to Anji about that. A lot of other sports topics coming up right around 12.30 here this afternoon. And, of course, as we've told you, we'll hear from Rick Barnes, a very disappointed Rick Barnes. Tennessee blew a 13-point lead last night, losing to Texas A&M in the conference opener at Thompson Bowling Arena. We'll also hear from Dabo Sweeney, the football coach of the Clemson Tigers, getting ready to 
for the second consecutive year. Battle the juggernaut, the Alabama Crimson Tide, and he feels like it's going to be a much better game, and they're going to be much more uh, well represented come Monday night for the national title game. So we'll see. We'll hear from Sweeney a little bit later on the show as well. Quick break. We'll come right back. Got a ton of college football. A couple of Tennessee volunteers saying they're moving on. They're going to enter the NFL draft. So rebuilding mode. We told you about that yesterday at Virginia Tech. Now they're in a rebuilding mode at Tennessee. We'll tell you who's leaving. All that and more next here in our college football segment on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Live at Chick-fil-A on Facebook Live on AM 790 WETB. Nick is going to win. You need to move on. Read my lips. Nick is going to win. So, Facebook folks, thank you for being with us again. Go to the one-stop shop, TomTaylorSports.com. Like us and share us. Share us and like us. We're on the show. We'll thank you ahead of time for that. And you have, and we can't thank you enough for doing that. So uh, please continue. And, again, we will say, as we said, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, doing that. And again, you can go there and click on the radio stations there. We've set that up. We're a team player. We're going to set that up so the radio station gets some pub. And so uh, we've done that. And so you also can go there and watch me live here on Facebook and also listen to the show live on, on WETB. So uh, TomTaylorSports.com. We'll come back here in just a second. Ben, I forgot to set the timer at the top. So we we'll go. Just wait until it's 13. That would give me, what, uh, 47 minutes? I'll wait until you tell me it's the old magic button. So the Tennessee offensive coordinator is quitting. He's gone. championship music please and also pull me up uh, the old national anthem we'll play that here this half hour too Back on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thanks for being with us on AM 790 WTB, the home of Charles Stanley. The In Touch program coming up at the top of the hour, 1 o'clock here this afternoon. Also, you have the Eric McTaxis show. Uh, let's see, what are some of the other shows? The uh, Thank you. And also, of course, this morning, he did a wonderful job as always. Our man, Ben Foy, on the morning show. How many calls do you have on the show again this morning? 42 calls on the general store. So there you go. Great show. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's uh, Ben likes to talk. And of course, Ben has done such a phenomenal job. How many years have you been doing the general store? Yeah. So what has happened? Uh, he has developed a rapport, which is a good thing with his listeners. And so a lot of times he's calling in and want to shoot the breeze. And that's a compliment to Ben because they feel comfortable doing that and because he does such a great job. So I can tell you, I've done it before back in the day uh, to do the general store, to take the, or the swap shop, whatever, back home or back in Florida, we call it a swap shop. But whatever it's called, it is not easy to do. And so this gentleman's got this market, uh, marketed and he does a phenomenal job. So when you think, eh, it ain't nothing sitting there taking a phone call, oh, yes, it is too. So he does a great job and averages anywhere between 40 and 50 calls in less than an hour. If you don't know what we're talking about, listen tomorrow morning at 9.05 here on 790. Uh, he buys, sells, trades. I heard a guy today talking about he had hogs for sale. Uh, I mean, you just really don't know from call to call what people are going to be selling or looking for, right? Yeah, so great show. He does a wonderful job in the mornings, and, of course, he's there also. And with this winter weather coming up, roads are going to get slick. Uh, schools are going to be closing, and those kind of things will be happening as we're into the winter mode here. We're going to listen in the morning. 
Ben will have all that information for you. And of course, uh, I know having done mornings before, the number one most important thing people want to know in the morning is the weather. And he gives you lots of weather. Everybody wants to know when they first get up, what's the weather going to be like today? How do I dress the kids? You know, do I have outdoor pets need to be taken care of? What's going on? So he does that and does it well here and does a great job on the mornings here on WTV. So the RUB. Let's hit the music championship music. Here we go. We've got lots of college football, a lot of it coming out of Knoxville, as a matter of fact. Three folks leaving, one a coach and two players. Let's start with the players. Tennessee defensive end Derek Barnett and wide receiver Josh Malone are planning to forego their senior seasons to enter the NFL draft. Malone announced that Tuesday via Instagram that he's entering the draft. Barnett sent it out on a tweet. Whatever happened, they'll have a press conference and sit down and go, hey, I'm leaving. But no, these guys are Instagramming. See, that's the beauty of social media. That's why we're doing what we're doing here on the show with AppalachianDigital.com. Barnett sent out a tweet saying it's been a three great years. I'm very thankful for getting the opportunity to play at Tennessee. Thank you for all the many memories. He's gone. Malone announced Tuesday via Instagram. He's gone, so these two guys are out. Barnett recorded 33 career sacks at Tennessee to overtake Reggie White as the school's all-time sack leader. Barnett from Nashville posted his record-breaking sack at the Music City Bowl in Nashville over Nebraska last week. So Barnett's gone. He had 13 sacks to lead the Southeastern Conference this season. That is a huge hole to fill on any football team, in particular the University of Tennessee football team. So I'm sure Butch Jones had an inkling that was going to be happening. And that's, again, big, big, big shoes to fill. Derek Barnett gone at the University of Tennessee, moving on to enter the NFL draft as a junior. Also, Josh Malone gone, the big tight end. Uh, also a critical piece of the offense, but not nearly as critical as Barnett was on the defensive side, but still a body you have to replace nonetheless. So Malone is gone, and he's more than just a body. He was an integral part of the offense, caught touchdown passes with the Tennessee football team, but he is gone, and so those two are out. Also, Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator. Ben Voy, I told you two weeks ago, somebody's head's going to roll in Knoxville because of the way the season ended, and guess what? Mike DeBoer's gone. He says, and, and I'm up here in East, up in the Tri-Cities, so the buzz is he's left to go to Indiana as an all-offensive coordinator there. So uh, they lost their whole game to Utah last month and fired their head coach, Kevin Wilson, midseason, promoting Tom Allen on a multi-year deal. And so he has picked up the phone and called Mike DeBoer and said, will you come be the offensive coordinator for the Indiana Hoosiers? He's gone, and I think that's probably... I'm sorry? Oh, no, it's not a step up. It's a get out of Dodge ahead of the, uh, I think he, I think he got out ahead of the posse is what I think. So somebody's going to have to make a move. And and uh, the defense a little leaky, too, but I'm not going to can that guy after one year from Penn State coming in, Stoop. So uh, Mike DeBoard's gone. And his offense averaged 36 points a game this season, rushing for 2,668 yards, rushing passing for 3,100. The Vols had 28 touchdowns through the air and another 31 on the ground. Last year, they averaged 35 points. They better themselves by a point a game. And so uh, they rushed for more last year. They rushed for nearly 300 yards more a year ago, but didn't throw for as many. They threw for about 600 yards more this year on the offense. And so what's the point? The point is they are making some improvement in some areas and kind of stagnant in others in the offensive side of the ball. So the board, a former offensive coordinator at Michigan and an NFL assistant coach, was hired at Tennessee back in 2015. So, with that opening, and he's got to fill it pretty quickly for the recruiting side of this thing, multiple sources confirming the former Oregon coach Mark Helfrich will be atop the Vols' wish list. Also, current staff members Larry Scott and uh, Zach Azaney. Uh, Azaney will be uh, getting some looks as well, so we'll see who's going to be the new offensive coordinator for the University of Tennessee, but Mike DeBoard is gone, effective immediately, as the offensive coordinator for the Volunteers. Tom Taylor Sports Show, we are live at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Minnesota firing their coach, Tracy Clays. A decision on his future was set to be made official this week following a review of the program. Clays promoted from interim coach to full-time head coach after Jerry Kill's retirement led the Govers to a 9-4 and record in a bowl victory over Washington State. So you're asking, why do you get rid of this guy? And I don't know why. Clays went 11 and 8 as a Gophers coach, 9 and 4, went to the bowl and won over Washington State. He's 2 and 0 in bowl games, 
there's really no reason to let this guy go except, if you recall, they had the protest up there in Minnesota. Athletic Director Mark Coyle said that Clays would be back in 2017. That was in November. A release statement of suggesting that a review was coming. And so Coyle, in a statement released by the school, cited the need for, quote, strong leadership to address challenges in recruiting, ticket sales, and the culture of the program. Well, that sounds like a cop-out. Wow. Strong leadership. Okay, the guy's 9-4. and four. He went 11-8 and eight in two seasons. Took over mid-season. Uh, no, I'll take it back. Promoted from interim coach to full-time coach for Jerry Kill's retirement. Clays went 11-8 and eight as a Gophers coach, including 2-0 in bowl games. But again, needing, uh, citing the need for a strong leadership to address challenges in recruiting, ticket sales, and the culture of the program. So he's gone as the coach for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Western Michigan's P.J. Fleck, Boise State's Brian Harson, and former LSU coach Les Miles among those. So that may be in the running for the new coaching job for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. So there you go. It's Tom Taylor Sports Show. Is that static all of a sudden on the line? Correct? Static? That's what I thought. Okay, I'm going to make sure it wasn't just in my headset. Anyway, Clays did a commendable job getting Minnesota ready on the field, but an off-field sexual assault scandal dominated the season. Minnesota players initially planned to protest the Holiday Bowl game, standing in support of 10 suspended players linked to a sexual assault investigation. Clays even tweeted support of the suspended players, which Coyle addressed in a statement on Tuesday. So... Apparently, it's not what he did on the field, it's what he did off the field or what he didn't do off the field. After diff uh, several meetings with the administration, the players backed off the boycott, but the details of the allegations made by the alleged victim, a game day operation staffer, were made public and reviewed. So there's 10 football players. Uh, the woman told police she was drunk when she was sexually assaulted in one of the players' apartment by several men, including some of the suspended players. So uh, this off-field problem may have got Coach Clays, Tracy Clays, the head man at the University of Minnesota. But again, 9-4 and four this season, won his bowl game over Washington State, went 11-8 in two seasons, and 2-0 and in bowl games. And the athletic director says we're looking for strong leadership to address challenges in recruiting, ticket sales, and the culture of the program. Looks like to me he is... Uh, What's the word I want to use? I guess he was the mm, odd man out, the whipping boy. What's the one? That's not the one I'm looking for. There you go. Thank you. That's the one I'm looking for. Scapegoat. Yeah. yeah. They had to do something with somebody because the pressure's on over the scandal. The players attempted to boycott. He talked them out of it and put them back on the field. And then he comes out in support of the players. So uh, it sounds like a mess up in Minnesota. But this guy on the field between the chalks produced nine and four. Bowl victory over Washington State, 11-8 and eight as a Gophers coach, including 2-0 in bowl games. He got it done, and so he's gone to the head man for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Tom Taylor Sports Show. Hello, Jerry Keller. Good morning, sir. I hope you're having a great day as well. Appreciate you very much. We're live at Chick-fil-A at the Crossings in North Johnson City. All right, so here's the update of Lane Kiffin. Here's the very latest. Alabama coach Nick Saban, I told you, Nick's going to win, Lane. He shot down the notion that recently departed offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin would help out the Crimson Tide offense in any way to turn the championship game on Monday. Speaking with reporters yesterday, Saban said Kiffin wanted to assist in the coach's box. How about this? Was, quote, not something we're interested in pursuing. <laughs> Yep, nice way of saying, Lane, Nick's going to win, buddy. Not something we're interested in pursuing. In other words, you're not wanted here now. He also said it's not possible from a legal standpoint for that to happen. So, Kiffin may have a hard time breaking away from Alabama, but Saban clearly does not have a problem of Kiffin breaking away from Alabama. So, exactly. And so you don't want to do anything to put yourself in harm's way from the NCAA to come down as a punishment or a penalty, uh, probation, something doing wrong because he's gone. He said he was leaving. He wanted to leave. He said on Sunday, I'm sorry, on Monday, he said, you know, if I wanted to coach the game, I'd still be there to coach the game. I left him on a court. Okay. Now he's thinking twice. I want to be there for the game. 
And Saban says, quote, not something we're interested in pursuing. So now this validates Houston's decision back earlier in the year, or late last year in December, they did not hire Lane Kevin. They said, quote, he was not a mature hire, which quote means I guess in layman's terms, he ain't grown up, and this would be a pretty good example of what they're talking about. So, yep, the announcement made Sunday that Alabama offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin would not coach the Crimson Tide in the national championship with Clemson. Chief reason for the exit, at least according to Kiffin and Saban, was that preparation for the semifinal win over Washington suffered because Kiffin was splitting his time between game preparation and building a program with Florida Atlantic, where he'll be the new coach. As I said two weeks ago when they hired this guy, how do you do that? And that he didn't do it because, again, when you have, if you're leaving a job, going to a new job, everybody knows this. You are focused on that new job and doing what you got to do to wrap up the old job. And a lot of times you give a two-week notice and the folks will just say, go on. You know, appreciate the two-week notice, but, you know, you've checked out mentally, just go on. So Kiffin said, oh, here you go. Kiffin said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to coach both. Alabama during the day, and I'll work for Florida Atlantic at night. The offense was not what Saban won last week against Washington, and so uh, preparation for the win over Washington suffered. So Kiffin says, you know, we're going for the national championship against Clemson. I'm going to have an offensive coordinator that's dialed in to Alabama football. So, yes. Absolutely, it is. Even in the off season. You think you think all these coaches now are sitting home? No, they're on the road. They're pounding the pavement. It's recruiting season now. Then they go through national signing date. Then they have their end-of-the-season football banquets for their teams. Then you along about March, April, and May. Then you start looking at staggered different schools about spring football practice. Then you get to the summer. School's out, and they're off campus for about eh, two or three weeks in the summer. The players are. Then they're right back in starting fall workouts. So, no, it's... It's 24-7 virtually as a head coach of a major college program. Kiffin's out. Steve Sarkeesian, the one-time Southern Cal coach who succeeded Kiffin, will also serve as Alabama's offensive coordinator next season. He will call the plays for Monday's game. However, Kiffin may still have a role in helping Alabama's game plan. So Kiffin is inquiring about being in the press box during the game to assist with the offense's game plan. This guy's a nut job, I'm telling you. In essence, he would he may be a good coach, but I feel this guy is and eh, that job's a little strong. He's just a different bird. How about that? Kiffin, by his own accord, said he's leaving. Now he wants to hang around and coach the game. Well, I don't know if he wants a ring. If there's a contractual bonus in there, if he wins the national championship as offensive coordinator. But again, the key to this whole story, Saban says, "quote Him being in the press box or coach's box Monday night." Not something we're interested in pursuing. <laughs> oh, that says a lot right there. So, uh huh. So, there you go. Kiffin says, "Man, I just want to be up there in the in the press box to help out Sark as he calls him down on the field calling plays." And Saban said again, "Quote: Not something we're interested in pursuing." Lane, two words, son. Move on, because you have, as the old boy said one time. Or though the girl said when she broke up with the boyfriend, she told the other guy, by the look on my face, you've been replaced. Well, there you go. And by the look on Saban's face, my friend, you are out. So, truck on. And have a good time doing it because don't think you'll be in the press box legally or otherwise for the Alabama Crimson Tide on uh, on Monday night for the National Championship. It's 11.30. We're live at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. We're here broadcasting live as we're doing the Wednesdays. And we love coming over here and hanging out with Connie and Tim and Oh gosh, who's here today? We've got Megan, we've got uh, Judy, we've got uh, we've got Abby. Got a great crew in here as always. These wonderful folks here at Chick Fil A. We'll take a break. We'll come right back. That's college. Got some more college football notes to tell you and pass on. We'll do that, and also we'll come back and hear the national anthem as promised from our buddy Taylor Gee Sanders. We're going to hear from her, and also we've got some more college football as we said, and also college basketball. And golf starts back up this week. It's kind of uh, the PGA Tour back going on in Hawaii. We'll tell you all about that coming up and a big purse for the PGA Tour. And so we'll talk more about that and college basketball and more college football next here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show on AM790 WETB and also on Facebook Live.
Thank you. Facebook folks, again, that one-stop shop, TomTaylorSports.com. We appreciate you very much. We know on Facebook I can see there's a glare in the back of the window a little bit. We've helped the best we can with it. So thank you for being with us. And so we're here again at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Tomorrow we will be, as we said, on the trail of Champion Chevrolet. And then Friday yet to be determined. And then Monday we're going to be at Hardee's. And, gosh, Tuesday of next week, I think I'm at American Import Auto Repair I am. Wednesday, Chick-fil-A, Thursday, Champion Chevrolet, and next Friday, Food City in Jonesboro. So uh, on the trail again like Willie, and that's okay. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So um, we do appreciate my man back in the studio uh, hanging out with us and doing a phenomenal job, our buddy Ben Foy. So, again, would ask you to please like us and then share us on Facebook. Again, TomTaylorSports.com, your one-stop shop for everything we're doing here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. We appreciate that very, very much. And, so we'll be right back with you coming up here in just a minute or two. Uh, you want to get the national get the national anthem ready? Okay. Back on the Tom Taylor Sports Show again. We're live at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. Again, as Ben said, cold temperatures coming. That Arctic front's going to hit us in here this weekend. Single digits on Sunday night. And so, they're going to be cold. And our good friends at American Import and Auto Repair, again, a couple of reminders for your winter car or winter weather vehicle, get it ready type thing going on. Check the battery and charging system for optimum performance. Cold weather's hard on batteries. American Import and Auto Repair will be glad to put you an American-made, hit it, American-made AC Delco battery. And by the way, not a political show, but I'm going to go ahead and jump on this bandwagon real quick. Uh, there is a reason. We've talked about this, and Andy Dietrich and I talked about this off the air one day last week, Champion Chevrolet. There's an air of optimism in this country. Uh, because of what's happening in Washington, or in this case, what was not happening in Washington. It was announced yesterday that Ford had planned on moving and building a 1.6 B as in boy billion dollar plant in Mexico and moving a lot of their, uh, a lot of their auto production facilities to Mexico. Well, President-elect Trump yet another company that said, you know what, we're not going to move to Mexico, we're going to stay right here in good old USA. And so they're going to do a $700 million, I believe is the number I read, a $700 million M, uh, improvement to the plant in Michigan. So they're not leaving. They're not taking all those jobs and all those families to relocate in Mexico, as he promised during his campaign. And so that's yet another one. Carrier being one said, we're going to stay here and not relocate to Mexico. So uh, why am I telling you that? I'm telling you that because it parlayed right in into American-made batteries and American Import and Auto Repair, AC Delco. So I'm very proud already what's going on in Washington. And does he have all the answers? Absolutely not. The only one who has all the answers is the Lord Jesus and so, and the King of Kings. But uh, it is refreshing for me anyway to see folks wanting to stay and keep jobs here in the United States and not uh, farm them out to other countries. So kudos to whether you like or not. He's helping our economy and helping keeping Americans here in our country and not moving away, moving out of the country, taking all that money with them, then I like him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so he got Boeing to back back down as they were overcharging the federal government building the Air Force One planes. He said he went and looked at it and said, unacceptable, we got to change that. So uh, I think it's safe to say there's a new sheriff in town. So Ford has said they're going to say put and that is a good thing. Whether you like Donald Trump or not, he's helping this country. All right, enough of that. Batteries, AC Delco, American made. Be sure and check your battery for cold weather. Also, American Import Auto Repair says check the antifreeze. That is huge. As a general rule of thumb, clean, flush, and put new antifreeze in the cooling system every two years. And I know this goes without saying because you're a smart listener on the other side of this microphone, but you do not want all water in your antifreeze. No, 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 no. Probably a 50-50 mix, but certainly not all water because you're going to be in a world of hurt this weekend when it gets down to the teens and, as Ben said, on Sunday night, Monday morning into the single digits. So you do not – how much? Four degrees. That just sounds cold. Four degrees. So 
Anyway, you want to make sure your antifreeze and tip-top shape in your vehicle. American Import and Auto Repair can do that. Uh, you can go by there, you can pop the hood, and they can take that little gizmo and put it down inside the radiator and check your antifreeze strength real easy. Also, make sure your heater, defroster, and wipers work properly. There is snow uh, coming in the higher elevations. We're going to be traveling, running into some snow. You want your wipers to work good. Maybe some snow around here too, but not, of course, not anything like it's going to be in the mountains. Check the tire tread depth and the tire pressure. During the winter, tire pressure should be checked on a weekly basis. Check your oil and filter and be diligent about changing them at recommended intervals. Dirty oil in the wintertime can spell trouble in the winter. Consider changing to winter weight oil if you drive in cold places. Make sure at American Import and Auto Repair they check the fuel, air, and transmission filters. Check your brakes. Check the exhaust system for carbon monoxide leaks. Also, the headlights. Make sure the headlights, the exterior and interior lights work and headlights are properly aimed. And also, you should also be sure and check your tire pressure and always have at least a half a tank of gas. In particular, this weekend, make sure you got a half a tank of gas in your vehicle. It's going to be four degrees on Monday morning. You don't want a half a tank of gas. You want more in your vehicle, at least a half a tank. You don't want the engine light, I mean the gas light on uh, Monday morning because you don't have enough gas in the car. That's just you're asking for trouble. And also... We talk about this, Ben. We should also, all of us should have an emergency kit, whatever we're driving, whether it's a truck or a SUV, whatever. Ice scraper, snow brush, jumper cables, flashlight, blanket, extra clothes, bottled water, some uh, dry food snacks, and any needed medications should be in an emergency kit in your vehicle. That's just kind of a no-brainer from American Import and Auto Repair. Those are very, very good tips, and appreciate those folks. One of our great sponsors, 22 Before the Hour. As promised, before we get into the college basketball segment, which is coming up next, and the NFL as well, a little sweet Georgia Brown coming up next. First, here is Taylor Gee Sanders with our national anthem. Young lady from Kingsport now lives in Nashville. Here she is singing our national anthem. Why? Because we're patriotic cusses on this show. We're unashamedly to tell you about that. And so here is a 22 before the hour on a Wednesday, January the 4th, 2017. Here is our national anthem. All right, Facebook folks, again, you obviously can't hear this, but we're going to fix that. That's going to be happening before the end of the month, so we're very excited about that, too. So but we can't do anything about that right now, but we will. Coming up, it's going to change. So we've got Greg Sire coming up here at the top of the hour talking Major League Baseball. I'm probably going to brag on how the Lord killed his daughter. So that's coming up here in a little while. So just sit tight. We'll come right back to you here. All right, Mr. Foy, we'll come out of this in a little sweet Georgia Brown to a basketball segment. Catering menu for those little brochures, please. Thank you, sir, very much. That Ben Foy, can the girl sing or what? I 
You got it. I would agree wholeheartedly. Good morning to you. It's 19 before the hour, 47 degrees. We're live again at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Oh, it's been a good day to get some cool wraps. Oh, yeah, grilled and sliced chicken breast nestled in a fresh mix of green leaf lettuce with shredded red cabbage and carrots and a blend of shredded Monterey Jack and cheddar cheese tightly rolled in a flax, flax seed flour flatbread. Say that fast five times. Flax seed flour flatbread. Flax seed flour flatbread. Ooh. And a flax seed flour flatbread. The Cool Wraps, again, here at Chick-fil-A. Can't go wrong with those. Also, the nuggets, uh, those fly out here, bite-side pieces of tender all-breast chicken, the meat served with your choice of dipping sauce. Also, the strips, got those. Uh, those are available, of course, made from those tender part of the chicken breast. Chicken strips are marinated with special seasonings and served with your choice of dipping sauces. All these available here at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Sweet Georgia Brown tells us time to talk a little basketball, and here we go. Last night in the college basketball world, top 25 hoops from last night. It went as follows. We had one upset last night in one. Texas Tech knocking off 7th ranked West Virginia, 77-76. Last night, Kentucky blew out Texas A&M, beat them. Holy smokes. Put the hammer on them. 158 was the final. That is a butt whooping. Wildcats beat them again at Rep Arena in Lexington. Also in top 25 basketball, 3rd ranked Kansas held on one by 2 90-88 over Kansas State. 24th ranked Florida, 7.1 over Ole Miss. And the SEC, a seven-point victory, 24th-ranked Gators. 14th-ranked North Carolina on the road, a scare, but they win by three, 89-86 over Clemson at Clemson. And in the Big Ten, 13th-ranked Wisconsin defeats 25th-ranked Indiana, 75-68 to in men's college basketball from yesterday and last night. Tonight goes like this. Top-ranked Villanova will be at 18th-ranked Butler. That's going to be a good one. Georgia Tech with Jeff Kappel on the sideline for the uh, injured and out with back surgery, Mike Krzyzewski. First game with the new coach or the interim coach. Duke will be hosting Georgia Tech tonight in Durham. Also, you have second-ranked Baylor. The Baylor Bears hosting Iowa State. Tenth-ranked Creighton will be at St. John's tonight. Ninth-ranked Louisville will be at number 23, Notre Dame. The Louisville Cardinals, Rick Pitino, on the road at South Bend tonight. Eleventh-ranked Virginia, the Cavaliers at 11-2 in Pittsburgh to battle the Panthers. Fifteenth-ranked Oregon will be at Washington in men's top 25 play. And 21st-ranked Virginia Tech, the Hokies, at 12-1, and having a heck of a year, will be in Raleigh to battle North Carolina State in the ACC. Last night, not a good night for Tennessee basketball. We're going to hear from Rick Barnes coming up here in just a second or two, as it was not a good evening for the, the Volunteers. Darrell Macon never felt jittery. Each time Arkansas attempted a free throw of the road game on the line last night, he knew the even delivery he went eight for eight on the free throw line in the final 54 seconds. They kept fouling the guy, and he answered. Arkansas down by as much as 13, erased a 13-point deficit, and withstood a late Tennessee comeback to win it 82 to 78 last night in Knoxville. Arkansas 12 and two, one and one of the Southeastern Conference has beaten Tennessee five straight times for the longest winning streak by either team in the 38-game history of the series. Tennessee falls to. 8-6, and 1-1 one and one of the Southeastern Conference. Tennessee came up short in the bid for its first 2-0 starting conference play since 2010. They will move on now, and I believe they travel to Florida, and they do. They go to Florida on Saturday. Here is Tennessee men's basketball coach Rick Barnes, very disappointed in what happened last night in Knoxville as the Volunteers lose 82-78. Here's Coach Barnes of the Tom Taylor Sports Show.
Come back with the uh Sweet George Brown. That's it, basketball coach Rick Barnes. Very disappointed. They blew a 13 point lead, losing to Arkansas at home, 82 78. Got to win your games at home, no question about that. Tom Taylor Sports Show elsewhere last night in Top 25 College Basketball. Joel Berry, the second, angry with this play. North Carolina's loss to Georgia Tech last Saturday. Made up for that last night, a career night at Clemson. Barry, 31 points, seven three-pointers. Tar Heels bounce back from their ACC loss, winning it, as we said, in Clemson, 89-86. Clemson goes to 11-3, 1-1. Carolina, 13-3, 1-1 in the ACC. Also, Canyon Barry spent the last few weeks staying late after practice, knowing it was the only way he was going to get out of his shooting lump. It paid off. Barry tied a season high 20 points. Kevon Allen added 14, and number 24, Florida, the Gators, held off the Rebels in Gainesville last night, defeating Ole Miss 70 to 63. And so the Gators now 11 and 3, 2 and 0 in the Southeastern Conference. The Ole Miss Rebels 9 and 5 and 0 and 2 in the SEC. What else happening in college basketball? Former Southern Miss assistant told 60 Minutes that Donnie Tyndall masterminded the academic fraud scandal that led to an NCAA investigation that effectively ended Tyndall's college code career, meaning there are now two former Southern Miss assistants on record against Tyndall. That's not good. Previously, there was only one, Adam Howard, and so now another one's come forward and said he uh, masterminded this academic fraud thing at Southern Miss. Uh, Tyndall again denies allegations, and so NCAA hit Tyndall with a 10-year show cause penalty in April of 2016, a year after Tennessee fired, his co fired their coach amid the investigation. The role it determined he played in violations committed while in charge of Southern Miss's program from 2012 to 2014. And a coaching casualty already in college basketball, South Florida firing their coach Orlando Antigua early yesterday. Antigua, a Pitt graduate who worked for Jamie Dixon at Pitt and John Calipari in Memphis and Kentucky before replacing Stan Heath at South Florida. He went 9-23 and 23 in his first year, 8-25 and 25 last year, off to a 6-7 and seven start this season. His younger brother, Oliver Antigua, resigned from his position on South Florida staff in July amid an NCAA investigation into possible academic fraud. That's not good. Next game Saturday for South Florida is going to be you. They're now being coached by former East Tennessee State coach Murray Bartow, who was an assistant on the staff. He has now been elevated to the new coach, the new head coach at South Florida. Murray Bartow, uh, formerly of East Tennessee State, now the new coach at South Florida. Obviously in South Florida. That's college basketball. Let's take a look at high school basketball from last night around the region. In Johnson City last night on the boys' side of things, it was Science Hill defeating Dobbins Minute 71-53. to 53. They'll Topper's got good. Crock beat Boone by two. Sullivan Central defeated Tri-Cities Christian by 11. Elizabethan's boys beat South by 20. Sullivan East by 15-point winner over Happy Valley in boys' play. Inukoi County defeated Johnson County by 11. Kachia's home scores over University High by five. And Granger beat South Green, blew them out 70-43 to in boys' play. On the girls' side of things, Science Hill beat Dobbins Men at 43-38, a five-point winner for the Lady Hilltoppers. Daniel Boone beat Crockett 76 to 20. Is that a misprint? Nope, it's not a misprint. 76 to 20. Boone over Crockett's girls. Sullivan Central beat Tri Cities Christian 82 to 22 in girls basketball. Being my cipher, that's a difference of 60 points. Is that right? Yeah. 82 to 22, the final. <clears throat> no, left them boots on. I can cipher on that one. 60 point. Out by the Lady Cougars over Tri Cities Girls. Elizabeth and over East by 23. 
Sullivan East ladies beat Happy Valley by 15. Unicoi County's Lady Blue Devils 48-41 winners over Johnson County. University High's girls beat Kachia 39-25. West Green over North Green by two. And South Green's ladies beat Granger's ladies 74-45 in girls and boys high school basketball. Continuing with our basketball segment here with Sweet Georgia Brown. We're live to play at the crossings in North Johnson City. NBA from last night. Here we go. You had winners. It was the Sixers by two over Minnesota. The Timberwolves trailed by as many as 26 and still lost by two. Sixers held on to beat them by two. Pacers over Detroit by five. It was the Celtics by 11 over Utah in Boston. 28 three-pointers between the two teams. Mavericks win by eight over Washington. Again, another big night. 28 three-pointers in that game between the two teams. The Suns beat the Heat 99-90 in Phoenix. The Kings by seven over Denver with 29 three-pointers in that ball game. Lakers, a 14-point winner over Memphis. Over Memphis, you knew I was going to do that. Julius Randle, a triple-double, 19 points, 14 boards, 11 assists for the Lakers in that win over Memphis. Kings by seven over Denver, 29 three-pointers in that game. My boys, the Spurs, blow out the Raptors by 28, 110-82. San Antonio now 28-7. and seven on the season. Tonight, NBA games, Oklahoma City at Charlotte, Atlanta and Orlando, the Battle of the Magic, the Knickerbockers at home in New York, the host Milwaukee, Chicago and Cleveland take on LeBron and the boys, Golden State, the defending NBA champions, hosting Portland tonight, Memphis will be in LA to battle the Clippers, and the Miami Heat continue their road swing out on the left coast, playing at Sacramento. And that is your basketball segment here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. We are live at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Some of those other options you can come in and get and enjoy. Oh, how about that chicken salad sandwich made with the freshest ingredients? It includes chunks of Chick-fil-A, chicken breast, chopped eggs, celery, sweet pickle relish, and mayonnaise. Oh, yes. Served chilled with green leaf lettuce on a wheat berry bread. Also, you've got the, oh gosh, you have the soup. We talk about the soup all the time. You can't go wrong with the soup and the sweet tea and the chicken wraps and the chicken strip trays. And for a limited time still while they're lasting, and they're running out of them would be the uh, chocolate peppermint milkshakes for the holidays. And once they're gone, they're gone. It's a seasonal product. And, and uh, once the supply runs out, they're not going to uh, they'll be out of for the year. So while they're still here, while supplies last, I guess you would say, stop by here and get yourself a chocolate peppermint milkshake. And as they say back home, it'll set you free. Tom Taylor Sports Show. Again, college basketball, the big one tonight. Number one, Villanova will be at number 18, Butler. And... We yeah, we talked about this yesterday. Again, uh, Jeff Capel will be the interim coach for Mike Krzyzewski. He's going to be out a month of back surgery. Uh, they will host Duke at 12-2, hosting Georgia Tech tonight, 9-4 and in Durham. Interesting to see tonight how they're going to perform under this interim coach for the Duke Blue Devils. <laughs> so the question is, you think you can do it? I guess that's the question. I think he'll step right in. They've certainly got the talent. They were preseason number one in some of the polls, and still folks feel like they're going to be the team to beat down the stretch and get everybody healthy. They'll take on Georgia Tech tonight. The other big game, ninth-ranked Louisville, 12-2, and two, and South Bend, the battle of ranked Notre Dame at 12-2. That'll be a good one tonight, too. And then, as we said, top-ranked Villanova, the Wildcats at 14-0 will be in Indiana to take on the Butler Bulldogs, 18th-ranked Butler at 12-2, and, and that's going to be a big one. We'll let you know who wins all these games tomorrow. East Tennessee State, by the way, the Buccaneers play tomorrow night. They start two-game road swing. They'll be at the Citadel tomorrow night in Charleston, South Carolina. Then the Bucs will move on and take on Mercer on Saturday. So it's a two-game road swing for the Bucs before they come back home and be at Freedom Hall. It is 5 before the hour. We thank you for being with us. We're live at Chick-fil-A across in North Johnson City. We talk sports here every day on AM 790, covering 20 counties across Northeast Tennessee, Southwest Virginia, and Western North Carolina, and even to the fringes of Eastern Kentucky. Uh, ben, we'll have your weather forecast coming up. Also, we'll t- find out about the Milligan College cycling team coming up next half hour. Also, Rhonda Rousey. Ben, what do you know about Rhonda Rousey? I've kind of checked out this young lady a little bit. Uh, she got hammered the other night in this U- is it UFC. Is that what she... In UFC, 
Yeah, I don't know anything about this. I guess I need to, to uh, bone up on it. But the UFC fight, and she got creamed the other night, but made a lot of money. We're going to talk about that coming back after the break. And also the PGA Tour in Hawaii this weekend. Wouldn't it be nice to be in Hawaii instead of Monday morning? Four degrees. We wake up Monday morning. Wouldn't it be nice to be in Hawaii? Yes, it would be. I'll go ahead and take that and run with it. Yeah. At this point, Charleston, South Carolina's going to look good if it's not going to be four degrees on Monday morning. So uh, Ben's got your complete weather forecast. Again, we'll come back and talk NFL, golf, Major League Baseball. Greg Salyer due to be with us. Got some NASCAR news. All that straight ahead. So come back with us. We're live at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. It is 3 before the hour. You're listening to the Tom Douglas Sports Show on AM 790 WETV. Also streaming audio on WETV 790.com and also on Facebook Live. Hello, Facebook folks. Again, I want to say thanks to one of our great sponsors here at Chick-fil-A. Any day is a good day to get a tray of Chick-fil-A's. We've got something coming up for the new year, some kind of a get-together or a business meeting, or I know several of my clients have sat down and they're getting ready to do goals for 2017, a lunch meeting or a dinner meeting. So if you need, for any reason, a tray, they've got them here at Chick-fil-A, and it's a phone call away at 952-0031. And, again, they can come in here, and I've seen them even at Christmas, the holiday season crunch. They'd hammer out these trays in about 15, 20 minutes. So pretty incredible what these folks and these kids, a lot of them are young people, they get done back there in the kitchen here at Chick-fil-A. So if you are looking for a tray, any day is a good day to get a tray from Chick-fil-A at the crossings here in uh, in North Johnson City. So appreciate them very much. And also those chocolate chunk cookies. I got some of those the other night, went home, got a big old glass of milk. So now I'm watching a cowboy movie. And dunk those cookies in the chocolate or into the milk and whoo you're talking about good lousy mercy so anyway and again uh, we want to say thanks for being with us on the Tom Taylor Sports Show at TomTaylorSports.com like us and share us and we would thank you ahead of time for that and so again we'll be tomorrow at Champion Chevrolet in Johnson City our next stop on the road and so uh, we just keep on keeping on and we appreciate you being with us wherever we are we'll be right back with uh, what we're going to do the NFL segment coming up here next here on the show. <coughs> All right, we'll do a championship uh, music for the NFL here at the top of the hour. Back on the Tom Miller Sports Show live again at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Thank you for being with us as we're here again on this Wednesday, January the 4th, 2017. Probably a little too early to start the countdown for Christmas for next year. I think I'll let that set for a little while, but uh, there are folks out there already starting to count down. I know folks now that are Christmas shopping now and putting things away and hiding them for next year because of all the sales going on. So are you one of those does that, Ben, or not? No. <laughs> there you go. So that's that's exactly right. So no, I don't uh, just let it roll. And uh, things, yeah. I mean, the little people, they changed two or three times the stuff they wanted. Just in the two couple of months that we were out there looking for Christmas goodies for them. So anyway, I agree with you wholeheartedly, 100%. Time now for our NFL segment. Let's take a look at the National Football League. Some uh, some stories coming out of there today. I love Brandon Marshall, this guy for the Jets, who, a player who's never qualified in, for the postseason in his 11-year career, despite eclipsing 1,000 receiving yards eight different times, is more than used to ugly seasons. This is what he said for the New York Jets. He said, the best way I can describe our year is, ha- is like having a diaper on and never changing it and to be sitting on that diaper for the whole year. That's how our year was. It was a bad year. <laughs> That's an interesting way to describe your season. Having a diaper on and never changing the diaper. And so it, uh, shit. Setting on for the whole year. Is that a good way to describe a a football season? Sounds pretty good to me. So, by the way, he's going to be back next year, a $7.5 million season for 
wide receiver Brandon Marshall. Again, the Jets did not win 10 games. They went 5-11. and 11. And so uh, that's the story coming out of New York. Also, the Cleveland Browns head coach Hugh Jackson guaranteed next year they would not, their football team would not, go 1-15 and 15 in Cleveland next year, which I thought was interesting to, to say. So uh, that's, again, a story coming out of Cleveland. Hugh Jackson making a prediction we will not go 1-15 in 2000. And 17. Also, the National Football League, more stories there. When an NFL coach guides his team to the playoffs, there's a pretty good chance the NFL team will retain said coach. Nothing to guarantee in the league, which is why the Detroit Lions confirmed Wednesday that Jim Caldwell and his staff would be back for the 2017 season. The Lions backed their way playoffs, jumping out to a 9 and 4 record before closing the season with three straight losses. Detroit needed a Redskins loss in order to confirm a playoff spot. If Washington had won, Detroit would have been on the outside looking in after losing to the Packers on Sunday night. And so Lions management says Caldwell will be back for 2017. So uh, there were some folks. Uh, Caldwell made a change at offense coordinator promoting Jim Bob Cooter, who flipped around Matt Stafford's season and possibly his career. So he made a little change in the middle of the season to kind of jumpstart the team. So... The Lions close with the Giants, Cowboys, and Packers all are in the playoffs. So, in their defense, it's not exactly like they played a bunch of cream puffs down the stretch. They played the Giants, the Cowboys, and the Packers in a row. So, pretty tough schedule. But, again, they finished 9-4, and four, and Jim Caldwell will be back next year for the head coach for the Detroit Lions. Tom Taylor, Sports Show, and we're live at Chick-fil-A, crossings in North Johnson City. Pro Football Hall of Fame list of nominees has been trimmed from 94 down to 15. All right, Ben, tell me how many of these guys you think should be in the Hall of Fame. Are you ready? LaDainian Tomlinson, running back for the Chargers and the Jets. Should he be in? Hey, again, let me give you, say up front, you have no stats in front of you. This is just name recognition only. So I don't have stats in front of me either. So, uh, But LaDainian Tomlinson, you think he could be a candidate for the Hall of Fame? All right. Brian Dawkins, safety for the Eagles and the Broncos. Jason Taylor, defensive end for the Dolphins, Jets, and the Redskins. Morton Anderson, a kicker for the Saints, the Falcons, the Chiefs, the Vikings, the Giants. Kurt Warner, the quarterback for the Rams and Cardinals, who's a big Christian. Uh, that doesn't mean he needs to be in the Hall of Fame. That's just a little, little extra plug for Kurt Warner. Don Coriel, the coach of the Cardinals and the Chargers. What do you think? I know I'm throwing you a curve here because you don't have any stats, but let me run down some more here. Tony Baselli, tackle for the Jags. Isaac Bruce, who was a receiver for the Rams and 49ers. Terrell Davis, running by Broncos. Uh, Alan, gosh, I can't remember how to pronounce his name. Vecina? You remember? I don't know. I don't either. Greg, Greg, Greg took his glasses off. I don't know. I don't either, but. Uh, I should know that. I apologize. The Steelers guard, F-A-N-E-C-A, Feneca. Maybe Alan Feneca. Joe Jacoby for the Redskins. Ty Law, uh, cornerback for the Patriots, Jets, Chiefs, and Broncos. John Lynch, a safe Buccaneers in Denver. Uh, Terrell Owens, receiver of the 49ers, and the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Bills, the Bengals. I don't see him in the Hall of Fame, but that's just me. Those three. Who? Yeah, I do too. I like Joe Jacoby. I thought he was an actual player. Big Joe. Those three are former. Uh, there's 15 candidates all told on this list. Considered for induction along with three other finalists who have already been named. Those three are former Seahawks safety Kenny Easley. Also Cowboys owner Jerry Jones and former NFL commissioner Paul Tagliabue. So those are the 15 players and the three other non, or not non-players, but other finalists. So we'll see. Those guys are coming off the seniors committee. Kenny Easley, Jerry Jones, and Paul Tagliabue. And so we'll find out who gets named for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And they'll announce that during Super Bowl weekend. So it went from 94 down to 15, actually 94 to 26, now down to the 15 finalists. So uh, I think probably your best bet out of all those would be Danny and Tomlinson. Probably is an, a given. Maybe uh, maybe Morton Anderson, kicker. This guy's put up some incredible numbers. Yeah. You know, kickers, not a lot of kickers get into the Hall of Fame, too. So, and Kurt Warner, maybe. Yeah, exactly. And then Joe Jacoby of the Redskins. I think he should, he should be in 
as well. Tom Taylor Sports Show. Again, uh, the playoffs coming up on Saturday. Goes as follows again on Saturday. All right, as 12 and 4, limping into the playoffs will be in Houston, the Battle of the Texans, 435 kick. Raiders 12 and 4, Houston 9 and 7. Also on Saturday, we just talked about the Lions. They said Jim Caldwell's back for his staff in 2017. Lions at 9 and 6 will be in Seattle, the Battle of the Seahawks, 10 5 and 1. Let's see, a couple of years ago, they did a, hang on just a second. <coughs> Excuse me, a couple of years ago, they put an audience meter. No, that's not it. What's it when they do the earthquakes? Oh, uh, gosh. What do you, Richter, Rick, Rick, thank you, not Richter scale, seismographic meter inside the Seahawks football stadium to measure the volume of the sound. And it was determined then it was the loudest stadium in the night football league. So, point to that, Lions have had their hands full in there Saturday night. In the adult, 10 5 and 1 Seahawks, Lions of 9 and 6. On Sunday, we talked about the weather in both of these places. Sunday in Pittsburgh, Heinz Field, the Steelers 11 and 5, taking on the Dolphins, coming up out of Miami at 10 and 6. A 105 kickoff. We'll get the latest, uh, what did we say it was going to be? I can't remember what we said it was going to be in Pittsburgh on Sunday, but it's going to be cold. 10 degrees, yeah, that's what it was. It was 8 to 10 degrees to kickoff. It's going to be dropping below that once uh, as the game wore on. And then the Packers, a 440 kickoff. Mercifully, it's a late afternoon game at Lambeau Field. A nine and six for the Packers, taking on the Giants. It was a cold weather team, 11 and five for those two. Uh, Giants, 11 and five, Packers, nine and six. 440 kickoff on Sunday for the Packers and the Giants at Lambeau Field. So, and they don't care up in Lambeau Field. Those people are nuts. I've seen them up here, no, no shirts on and, you know, they're crazy, so. It'll, it'll make a difference what's going to be in Lambeau Field. Packer fans, it won't matter. They're, uh, they're a different bunch, and that's okay. They're very, very avid football fans. <laughs> that's exactly right. Cheesehead, and they wear it well in Green Bay. So it's going to be cold in Green Bay. It's going to be cold in Pittsburgh. Steelers probably one of the hottest teams in the National Football League right now. And so we'll have more to say about that tomorrow. Coming up, we are going to hear from... From Babo Sweeney, the head football coach of the Clemson Tigers. Also coming up, we're going to hear from at the bottom of the hour, our buddy Dave Angie. But coming up next, he's here. He's ready. You want to go now? You ready to get going? Yeah. Greg Sayers here with us, Major League Baseball update. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing? Hey, I'm great. How are you? Good. I got a story right out of the gate about the Reds bullpen. Last season, this is how the story starts. The Reds bullpen last season was awful. In fact, it worked really bad in coughing up home runs. Right-hander Drew Storm, a sign of the Reds. Is that a good thing? That's a great thing. That's a great thing. <laughs> Why would I ask him that, knowing I just read the statistic about how bad they were in the bullpen? They set a record for most home runs allowed in the Major League staff, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, so anyway, the Reds signed Drew Storm. Tell me about Drew Storm. What's his numbers? What's he all about? Well, Drew Storm is a former closer. Last year in Seattle, though, was not his best year. Um, you know, 5.23 ERA, and 50 wins, 50 wins, and Blue Jays and Mariners. And, you know, not really what you're looking for, but uh, he's been extremely good in years past. Uh, you know, 56 and 30 innings, and uh, I think in 2014, it was 1.12 ERA. We'll take that any day. And, uh, you know, I definitely something that they need to do. They had to address that whole team. I would like to grab another guy that's probably through scoring as well. And uh, get a couple of other guys in that world here that they can use. So, uh, you know, I think he's going to be uh, a great addition. Uh, you know, I think we'll see perhaps scoring uh, Rogel and Glacius and maybe even Michael Woods and the company's party all play the two games next year. He's rolling these names off his lips because he's a big Reds fan, and there's there you go, we're on the second page. Another failed starter is how they set this guy up, but he may be back in the bullpen. It's set to the back of the bullpen. So 35 outings last year. Lorenzen, 2.88 ERA, 48 strikeouts in 50 innings. Somebody asked me the other day what war means, capital W-A-R, as far as statistics. Yeah, it's, 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 it
how good are your players is that how good players because some guys have a negative player, some guys have a positive player. And uh, yeah, it's, it's the hot stat right now. Uh, it's, it's one of the reasons that they go to the Hall of Fame. You know, what was the career war where they just added up year after year after year? You know, a lot of these guys will have one of the seasons that they've got a long when he brought that up, here's our next topic. Talking to Greg Sire, talking Major League Baseball, the Hall of Fame nominees, Billy Wagner out of Southwest Virginia. I thought it was a great story. We talked about this yesterday on the show. He learned to throw left-handed after breaking his right arm as a kid. Played in 16 big league seasons from 1995 to 2010. Was a reliever the entire time. He made zero, not a none starts. Never started a game. Always coming out of the bullpen. Is this guy Hall of Fame material? Absolutely. Uh, I think we're like, you know, all the guys who are the future to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's hard to really begin with. Raleigh Fainter's the first time, but he is. And there's not been many since then. Bob Dawson. Wilhelm. Wilhelm, yeah. And, and, and there's not a whole lot of guys uh, that have done that. So I, I think he's good enough to get in. I think they're going to have to look more at who he was as a player instead of just a player. But uh, I think he was definitely a, a, a dominant player in his era. I think he was a guy that was a huge shot. I mean, you know, I thought that was one of the guys that we played. He was a guy that was a guy that was a guy that was a in 16 season, Billy Wagner out of Southwest Virginia, a seven-time All-Star, received twice, received Cy Young votes, and two times in 1999 and 2003, received votes for the MVP of the league. Fourth in Cy Young voting in 1999 after saving 39 games that year. Again, back to that WAR, wins above replacement. Wagner is sixth all-time. Uh, again, Mariana Rivera, Hoyt Wilhelm, Goose Gossage, Lee Smith, who's up for his final year on the ballot. For the Hall of Famer's 15th and final time, will not receive the 75% needed for induction, so he's not going to get in. Trevor Holland should get in. I think he's going to roll back around. That may be a chance for him to get in this year. And then Billy Wagner. So uh, Wagner is pretty good company right there in the, in the all-time great relievers of Major League Baseball. So Billy Wagner, we'll see. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Young man out of Southwest Virginia. And so we hope that he will, again, get into the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. You ever been there to the Hall of Fame? I have. Have you really? Absolutely. Is it, it is. cool? Is it safe? Is it awesome. Is it? I would say, I would say, uh, <laughs> say I was about 17 or 18 years old when I went to Cooperstown. That's my great friend. High school, everybody else went to the Beatles. There you go. That was my senior trip. And I graduated high school. I was around in Cooperstown. And had a wonderful time. Uh, yeah, if you're a baseball fan, you've got to go sometime. It is it's awesome. The whole town is, is baseball. I mean, uh, as it's how it is. They have other museums there. That's where I want to go. Yeah, yeah. Forget yeah, baseball. You've got to see it. Uh, <laughs> but Cooper's uh, Town is a place that every baseball fan needs to be at least once in their lifetime. Uh, we were actually there in the production and when we planned the trip, we didn't realize that that's what it was. So we were there the weekend that uh, Luke Rock, Lewis Slaughter, Archie Vaughn, another guy went in there, the eighth guy, and um, met, got to meet Lewis Slaughter years later after that, and uh, mentioned to him, I said, hey, I was in Cooperstown, and you were inducted into the Hall of Fame, and you signed an eight to 10 picture, and we're out to find each other sometimes. So he wrote a book on this thing. Blood type, social number. <laughs> Tom and Greg Sire talking baseball here. As with it's twelve sixteen, we're live again at Chick Fil A. The crossings in North Johnson until one o'clock. With Charles Stanley, we'll take over the airwaves here at, at WETB. Kurt Schilling, undeniably a great pitcher and one of the best postseason performers in baseball history. Deserves serious consideration for the Hall of Fame. However, comma, received only 55% of the vote as of writing this year, well below the 75% needed for induction. Here is his response to this. Have you read that? You know where I'm going with this? Where you're going. This, guy's, this guy's a different bird. He said, well, he believes his support of President-elect Donald Trump was one of the reasons he's losing Hall of Fame support. Uh, no, Kurt. 
What he did say a couple of weeks ago, he shared an image on Twitter that has supported lynching journalists. Now, these guys are going to be voting for him. And so he calls him, he feels like we're going to lynch a journalist. So, Kurt, uh, you can't bite the hand to feed you, buddy. So, by calling these guys out, in fact, later in the article it says, the voters are not hiding the fact they stopped voting for me because of the things I've said on social media. Uh, that's their prerogative. The voters are not going to vote for me because of the character clause. These are some of the worst human beings I've ever known voting. They are scumbags. <laughs> so, Kurt, uh, we need to get him a copy of that Dale Carnegie book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, because I don't think it's working there. So, uh, you've kind of painted yourself in the corner on that one, big guy. No. Exactly. No. Uh, Brian Dozier, before we get into some other really cool stuff we're going to let Greg talk about. Brian Dozier, uh, the Twins being shopped. Uh, twins said, okay, when well, you guys are serious, your other teams come to us with a checkbook. We're ready to talk. Right now, it's the Dodgers and the Cardinals are looking at him pretty strong. Yeah, everything I've been hearing, it sounds like the Dodgers. Give me the numbers of those who had a heck of a year last year for the Twins, and, and with as all of that, it, his value has definitely gone up, as it should be. And there's uh, some money flying around to get this guy to come play for him. He had a pretty good year last year. A couple of free agents still hanging out there. We're talking to Greg Sorry talking Major League Baseball. Jose Bautista. Mark Trumbo, two of the guys that are still out there hanging, what do you think? It, it appears that the Bautista's <coughs> really, his uh, talk on the Blue Jays are really getting more and more serious. And it appears that he's going to be more about the Blue Jays, which would probably be a good move for both him and the team, I think, at this point. Uh, Trumbo, you know, we're not hearing a whole lot about Mark Trumbo. No. I, I would not be surprised if he doesn't go back to uh, Baltimore, but I've also heard Colorado that, I mean, I can't imagine the power that this guy could display. Colorado, uh, We're talking to Greg Sire talking Major League Baseball. We're also talking about something really cool, and, and you can talk at whatever liberty you want to talk, but uh, we saw firsthand on Sunday at the old church house, uh, folks, in 2017, uh, before he gets into what he's going to say and how he's going to say it, uh, if, if there was everybody in that congregation doubted, and I don't think very many people did, because they hear his teaching every Sunday, but if anybody doubted that prayer was not going to be answered in 2017, the Lord still didn't answer prayer. We saw big time on Sunday, January 1st, which I thought was really cool to start the new year. It kind of made a statement for a lot of people. Tell us what happened because uh, you're right there in the middle of it with our little buddy and, and take it away and tell us how things went and the Lord answered prayer in a big time way. Yeah, it's kind of funny you say I was right in the middle of it. I wasn't even there Sunday. Um, I'm in the hospital room. I, I, had, a, I had a good reason, yeah. Um, uh, my daughter Hannah had uh, surgery for scoliosis last week, on the 28th, and the surgery went well. Things things the week after the surgery, um, but her body didn't respond well to the narcotics that they put on her and things just uh, you know she was having all kinds of issues, a lot of nausea, a lot of uh, other complications. And Saturday night things got really really bad, and uh, they were willing to take some some steps that we felt were perhaps unnecessary. And, uh, we, we said, let's just wait till the next day. Let's let's reevaluate in the morning. Let's see what happens. And um, that that turned out to be a, a very wise move because another doctor came in and said, no, we're not going there. It was her original surgeon came in and said, no, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to go this direction. And um, they said we're going to let her sleep for a while because she had had a very rough night Saturday night. I mean, just thrashing all over the bed in pain, uh, abdominal pain on, on top of the back pain that she was having from her surgery. And um, you know, her pain level was it was a nine most of the evening, and uh, you know, it, it, it was bad. It, it, it was tearing at our hearts, and it was just excruciating. Um, Sunday morning, we turned on the live stream and was watching uh, the church service. And 
you know, I, I knew that David Hoffman would tell me they said, Pastor, we're gonna we're gonna pray for him during the service. Well, I expected something toward the end, but that's not exactly how it worked out. And um, what happened was the church prayed for about thirty minutes specifically for and um, you know, the service was over roughly twelve o'clock or so. Uh, she started opening her eyes about ten minutes to twelve. And uh, when she got good and awake, about 12, 12 05, something like that, we saw a smile. We hadn't seen that since she'd had the surgery. And uh, the abdominal pain was gone, uh, the nausea was gone, and, uh, you know, still the back pain, which of course she's going to have after having uh, 12 screws and two rods and two hooks put in her back. Uh, you're going to have pain from that. Uh, so that's st that was still there, of course, but. Uh, the complications weren't entirely gone, but boy, they sure were so much better. And, uh, you know, we just really appreciate everything that happened there. And, and it wasn't just Southwestern, you know, we had a lot of churches looking at up there on Sunday, pretty much all over the country, because, uh, you know, I, I put it out there on Facebook and said, hey, uh, can all my friends look up in prayer? And, uh, you know, I know a lot of pastors. So uh, I got responses back from people. Everywhere, especially Texas. Texas was a place where, where a lot of churches were really praying for her. And uh, Eastern North Carolina would be just So uh, we appreciate all, all of that happening. And things are good. We ended up taking her home on Monday. And, uh, you know, last night she was having a little bit of pain issue. but uh, And this morning a little bit as well. But that's to be expected. That was one of the things we expected to, to deal with with this. We didn't expect all the knowledge. We didn't expect... Um, we didn't expect our uh, digestive system to shut down like it, um, but uh, you know those things happen, and uh, hopefully uh, we learn some things. So what do we learn from this? We've heard this, and we saw the before and after when uh, you know people of faith began to pray on directly and specifically for you and your wife and Hannah, and so he obviously heard us, not just here at all country. So. Someone out there listening to the show, what can you tell them about the power of prayer? Well, I can tell, I can tell them a lot of things. One, one of the things that I thought was quite funny uh, that I'll share, and then I'll, I'll get I'll get more serious. But uh, Sunday afternoon, one of the fellows from the church came by and visited. He said, uh, "He's a pastor. He's, I think that was the best church I've ever been in a while." And I didn't quite know how to take that since I wasn't there <laughs> um, as the pastor of the church. But, uh, you know, I, I said, well, okay, that's great. I said, I'm thanks. I've done it well. And, but what all that means is a hey, pastor doesn't have to be there for God to show up, you know. Um, one of our uh, greeters called me later in the, in the evening and said, you know, he said, I was a bit late walking in because I went to go and greeting people. And uh, he said, what? He said, I knew before anything was really going on that there was a special day. Sure. He said, you could tell as soon as you walked in the building that there was a special day, that God was really going to do something. And uh, a lot of times we never know when that's going to happen. We never know what God is going to do. But uh, obviously, uh, sitting there in that, in that hospital room, um, we were watching it on my cell phone uh, as it happened. Um, literally with tears streaming down our faces sure. um, because of what we had experienced the night before and knowing how bad it was and not knowing how it was going to be when she did wake up in, in, in literally less than an hour. So, um, you know, we, we saw firsthand that God still moved in a miraculous way. And, and that's the only thing we can say. It, it was a miracle because when she woke up, um, she had a smile, she said pain, pain you know, the abdomen is gone. Um, a lot of swelling was all around by her from her stomach. And um, she got up and they walked her all over that hospital. She walked up steps, she did things that we didn't think she would do for a day or two. And, uh, you know, because on Saturday night they were saying it might be four more days in the hospital. I mean, they were saying, you know, she may have to take a look at or some of the things that were going on. And uh, we never did on Monday. There you go. So lesson learned, folks. He's still on the throne. He's still in the miracle business. And we saw it firsthand here in Johnson City, Tennessee. And people see it firsthand every day. But it's really cool for my little people to see, because they know her, obviously, and that we prayed for and saw the the before and after. And, and so they've kind of got caught up into it as well. And we watched that movie, The War Room. And so uh, a lot of lessons to be learned uh, just on the first day of January 2017 for uh, – Again, this show we dedicate to the Lord every day. And hey, he's still on the throne, folks. He still answers prayer. And if you don't think so, you can call this guy or call me, and I can tell you, 
but definitely call this gentleman here. And of course, you just heard it. You need to call him. You heard it. So he does still answer prayer in 2017. He ain't going anywhere. He's still there. And uh, he says in Hebrews, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he didn't. And that's good stuff. Spring training, when start? Five weeks out. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And when I wake up Sunday night, Monday morning, Ben Stahl is going to be in single digits here in the Tri-Cities. Great. So when I hear that magic word, spring training for baseball, five weeks out, I know the Daytona 500 inside of 60 days where they start racing in, in uh, Florida for the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series season. So uh, it's good stuff. Anything before I let you go? Do you, we talk about Bautista. Uh, Trumbos. Anybody else out there that's kind of a big fish that's yet to be hooked? Well, there was a signing. Uh, Roger Davis signed with the A's. Uh, he signed with the A's. And uh, I think there's going to be a deal. Very popular now after playing uh, in the World Series this year. And they've had a couple of years. They've played for the A's in the years past. And uh, we you go. Five weeks till pitchers and catchers report. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So right now, going into the 2017 season, with everything's happening in the off season, Cubs still the team to beat. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't think they're. I don't know if they're as good as they were. American League incarnation of the Indians, that's going to bolster them. Of course, the Red Sox did what they did in the offseason. That's your top two teams in American League? Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, yeah, Cleveland will have some pride on the people. I was kind of on the bandwagon. We're doing a little bit of 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 a little uh, in the church house on Sunday. Oh, that's right. You're pinch hitting again. Austin's going to be there. Yeah, Austin's going to be there. Uh, Mark Gibbons going to say tonight. I'm, I'm trying to take him to the golf and uh, leave his family to sleep. Uh, I don't have to throw this out of bed right now, so uh, I'm going to go last and uh, I'll be back in the saddle. Uh, more than Spoken like a true redneck, back in the <laughs> saddle. There you go. Hey, I'll see you next week. All right, sounds good. Get you some lunch. Again, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. It is 1230. Guess who's coming up next? He is coming in his lumberjack shirt. He's ready to go. Dave Ogie from the Chop City Press. We're going to be talking some sports. Man, looks like they're not cutting wood. Looks like Paul Bunyan. I can't wait to talk to him. Thanks to Greg Salyer stopping by. Also got Dabo Sweeney coming up here in the next half hour. Quick break. We'll be right back. We're live at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. And also on AM 790, we as we are. And also on Facebook Live, you're listening to the Tom Taylor Sports Show. All right, Facebook folks, there you go. There's the power of prayer. We saw it firsthand again uh, with his daughter Sunday. Went from down and out, uh, and then prayers went up right around 11, 20, 11, 30, and noon she woke up out of uh, been out because of the medicine and was a totally different young lady, and now the sense has gone home. So that's what happens when you believe. So great lesson to be learned for all of us from our pastor and also Major League Baseball buddy uh, Greg Salyer. TomTaylorSports.com is the one-stop shop. We've got Facebook. You can hit the button and uh, watch us here on the phone. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can also hit the button and go to WETB. Listen live there, even after I'm off the show. So at 1 o'clock, if you want to crowd about here, Charles Stanley. In the mornings, you want to hear Ben Foy. Whatever you want to hear on the station, it's there 24-7. It doesn't cut off just because I'll go off the air. So uh, good stuff. 
love WETV, and they do a wonderful job promoting the gospel and, of course, do a little sports as well. So hang tight. We'll come right back. We'll be joined by our buddy Dave Angie right after this. <coughs> Hello, Ben Foyer. Is that okay? Tell me when it's 12.30, right now, I'll hit the magic button. Now. No. Jump the gun. Now. No, jump the gun. Now. <laughs> Bingo. Booyah. Saw what's up. Back to the Tom Builder Sports Show. We're live again at Chick fil A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Look at my man over here, Lumberjack. You been out cutting wood, dog? The weather's coming, Tom. I don't know if you've heard. <laughs> I love it. This time tomorrow, you'll wish you had a, a big stack of firewood out there. I'm. You're probably right. Weekend. He said. Ben said. Monday, Sunday night, Monday morning, single digits. Yep. Yep. I saw one degree. Yeah. The weather channel said. So. Get me out of here. Get yep. me somewhere. South Carolina, Charleston, Myrtle Beach, somewhere. Get me out of here. So. But no, we got to be here to do the show. Monday will be at Hardy's on West Market Street in Johnson City. Dog and sports with our man Dave Andre. We're going to hear from Dabo Sweeney's promise coming up here in a few minutes. Head football coach of the Clemson Tigers. Let's roll in. Talk. Yes, sir. Go ahead. He's saw in law. Oh, that's good. That's good, man. He's saw in logs. Where's the bell? There you go. He's saw in logs. So we're on him by his shirt. That's all right. He says, Laugh you want, boys. Tomorrow you all would like to have this shirt because it's going to be cold. So. Lane Kiffin, what what in the world? Is this guy a piece of work? I mean, he's leaving. Now he's not leaving. Now he wants to stay back there. And and uh, I've got a quote from Saban about what he thinks about Lane Kiffin coming back and hanging hanging out for the national championship game. What's your take on all that with Lane Kiffin Saban? All I can tell you is something unscheduled happened. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but you know, if, if you look at this logically, Alabama had a lot of time between. Um, the SEC championship game and their, their semifinal game in the playoffs, where if you're going to change offensive coordinators, that's the time you do it. You know, you do it then where you can kind of you know, get, get the new guy in there and get him uh, get him used to calling uh, plays and get him into the game planning. But to do it with nine days in between your semifinal and, and the championship game, it's a sign that something really went south in that entire relationship. And, uh, you know, Kiffin been a bizarre uh, turn of events with him, and, and he's a guy who I think getting another chance at being the head coach, obviously he doesn't want to stay at Florida Atlantic forever, he's going to want to move back up, but you know, he's off on the wrong foot here because you know, he's looking, people that wondered about his maturity after watching what's gone on the last few days are still wondering about his maturity, so um, yeah, it's, like I say, I don't know what it was, there's a report that the, the bus left it behind one day mm -hmm. you know, during, during the practice <laughs> leading up to their, their semifinal game, and and now it's just, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. There's going to be a story one day that comes out. They'll probably do a 30 for 30 on it on ESPN, but it'll be it'll be fun to find out what it was that, that led Saban to his breaking point here. Kiffin uh, says he wants to come back and coach in the press box Monday night for the national title game, and Saban says, quote, that is not something we're interested in pursuing. Yes. That'd be a nice way of saying, truck on, cowboy, yeah, you're yes, out. Yes, it is. It's a, nice, it's a nice way to say, get down to Florida and start recruiting and, <laughs> and see what you can do down there. But, uh, yeah, it's you know it's going to be interesting. And, and I don't know how this affects Alabama's offense. I didn't think offensively they were great in that win over Wisconsin, or Washington. Uh, you know, what surprised me about that game, I thought Washington was going to be able to put up points on Alabama. But I didn't think Washington's defense was going to be able to stop Alabama. And I was surprised on both counts, of course. Alabama winds up winning, and it's a dominant victory. But, uh, you know, I, I think there's got to be concern when you're going up against Clemson, a team that's going to be able to put points up against them and prove that last year. Um, you know, I'm, I'm wondering what's going to happen. Uh, the only positive you can take away for Alabama is with the new offensive coordinator, they're going to be unpredictable going into this game. You don't know, you don't really have a track record on play calling or tendencies or any of that. You have to throw that out the window. But that's going to be a really good thing or a really bad thing for Alabama. Was this all premeditated? He brought Sarkeesian in at a kind of an inopportune time, kind of an odd time to bring him in uh, to Tuscaloosa as an analyst, kept him up in the uh, 
coach's box and could not come down on the field and, and interact with the players during game day. So uh, was this all kind of thought out that somebody so – I still contend somewhere at some point the door was shut and either Saban told Kiffin or Kiffin told Saban, you know, either I'm out of here or Saban says you probably need to uh, – something because it was just too uncanny how he brought this guy in out of the blue from Southern Cal. And I know Saban's big about giving guys second chances, and, and that's exactly what he's done to this coach. But something just doesn't add up. And so you think it was – I don't think premeditate is the right word. You think it was, it's been preplanned is going to happen? You know, I, I think coming into this season that both men knew this was going to be the last year, and I don't know who made that decision. I can see Kiffin wanting to get back into coaching. You know, the fact that it's Florida Atlantic is a little bit bizarre to me. And then you hear for a while that he wants to go be offensive coordinator at LSU. And, and I think – you know, I don't know what happened there. Um, you know, but I think they both knew going into the season that it was going to be the last year for Kiffin as offensive coordinator at Alabama for whatever reason. Uh, like I say, there's, there's a story here somewhere, and it's going to be a whopper once it finally comes out. But, uh, yeah, Sarkeesian was definitely brought in uh, to be the replacement uh, for, for Kiffin when he stepped aside. And like I say, I don't know whose decision that was. And, and both men right now, Saban and Kiffin, are kind of trying to take a stance that it was their, their own decision, you know. And, and I don't know where the truth lies on that. Tracy Clay's another story. Tracy Clay's out as coach of Minnesota. Guy goes nine and four this year, eleven and eight in two years. Goes to the bowl, beats Washington State. He's two and zero in bowl games. They can't even because they're looking. They're looking for leadership, stronger leadership in the program, more ticket sales, uh, more a pulse on the culture at Minnesota. None of that makes any sense to me. Why do you can Tracy Clay's? Well, you know, I, I thought it was a curious hire in the first place. The guy took over for, uh, for Jerry Kill, and uh, you know when that. You know, of course, obviously he had he had some health problems that made him step aside. And you know, when this guy came in as an interim coach, um, you know they won some games they shouldn't have won, and immediately there's, there's an emotional factor to it. Um, you know, and, and instantly everybody gets on board. Yeah, this is this is our guy. Let's hire him. Uh, and it just wasn't a good hire. You know, and he never struck me as a guy that was head coaching material. Um, I think Minnesota's paid for that. You know, because when you look at where they were at when Jerry Kill was there, obviously they had a pretty decent season this year. It's a really subpar schedule, though. Um, you know, they're not where they were two or three years ago. So um, I think it was a bad hire. I think they're good to get out of it. They've had some controversy around that program uh, with, with players and their, their actions off the field and the way that he handled that. So, you know, I, I think they decided to, to cut at this point. And I think, uh, you know, it's a couple years too late for them. It's going to be hard for them now unless they're able to, uh, to hire the coach from, from Western Michigan. Um, you know, it's going to be hard for them to be able to get back where they were two or three years ago. We're talking to Dave Andre, the John City Press. They do this every day. It's 23 before the hour. We're live at Chick-fil-A. Top of the hour, Charles Stanley takes over the airwaves of WETB. We'll be on the road tomorrow at Champion Chevrolet. Again, Monday we'll be at Hardy's. Uh, next Tuesday we'll be at American Import and Auto Repair. Next Wednesday we'll be right back here at Champion. Next Thursday, or I mean at uh, Chick-fil-A. Next Thursday we'll be at Champion. And next Friday will be our first food city first food city launch of the new year. We'll be at Food City in Jonesboro next Friday broadcasting live. We're here. We're talking to Dave Angie, close to home, Derek Barnett, Josh Malone gone at Tennessee. They're going to enter the NFL draft early. Also, your offensive coordinator of the board is gone to go to Indiana. Now, how did that how did that come down? Was that a, you probably need to get ahead of the posse, or, you know, did he see the handwriting on the wall of the board, or what do you think happened in Knoxville? Well, I think, you know, for the board, it was kind of a brutal year when, when you look at the um, you know, when the fans started turning, you know, on, on this uh, coaching staff, uh, that's that's a tough situation. And, and I think the heat of that, plus the fact, I mean, the guy is from Indiana, and he's got kids and grandkids up there. Uh, you know, being being at Michigan for all those years, you know, able to visit a little bit closer to home there. Um, you know, so now he gets to go closer to home and, and coach in the Big Ten again, which I think is more his comfort level. Uh, you know, so I think that's why that happened. I think it's a blessing for Tennessee because I, I never – like the fit of him at, at Tennessee with their offense. I never understood uh, why he was the offensive coordinator. But the problem for Tennessee now is you know, there's a lot of teams looking for offensive coordinators. We already had a couple guys hired. The former Indiana head coach, uh, Kevin Wilson, gets hired at Ohio State. You know, that's the report that's going to happen or, or has you know, So now you can start to see it. See, obviously not, um, not an unexpected situation with either guy, but of course uh, two more holes they have to fill going into next year, uh, which will be a year where there's going to be more unproven players on the football field than there was this season. So, um, you know, a year of transition next year in a year that's going to be a very crucial, very important year for Butch Jones.
Mark Helfrich, one of the guys, a former Oregon coach, maybe a rumored as offensive coordinator coming to Knoxville. Larry Scott on the current staff member, maybe a guy who can be elevated offensive coordinator. Uh, you know, you're right, there's a lot of movement on out there. What about Chip Kelly? He got canned from San Francisco. Would that be a possibility? Because he said he'd be interested in coming into the college ranks as an offensive coordinator. Is that a possibility? I'll tell you, that um, that would be a dream scenario for Tennessee. You know, you look at uh, what happened with the basketball program where you know, they, they lose a, a coach to NCAA sanctions. It looks like it's a very bad league situation. All of a sudden, Rick Barnes gets fired from Texas and he shows up, and I think he's a guy that really going to put that program on solid ground, you know, in the next five years, really moving in the right direction. So, you know, it could be a time where, you know, a, a position opens up to them um, and it happens, you know, they have a guy that gets fired somewhere else that is able to slide right in. I think uh, it would be a stretch, you know, to just see him at Tennessee. Uh, I don't know if there's any connections there. I will say that the offense they, they aspire to run at Tennessee um, is, you know, very similar to what Chip Kelly ran up at Oregon. And I think that would just be a home run higher for them if they get him. But I think um, uh, I, th I think that's a little bit of a stretch. Again, we're Donald Dave Andre with the John City Press. Tennessee's offense this year averaged 36 points a game, rushing for 2,668 yards, passing for right at 3,100 yards. The ball's had 28 touchdowns through the air, another 31 on the ground. Offensively, you got to find a quarterback. That's a biggie. Other than that, you think your offense is pretty pretty solid going into 2017 in Knoxville? You know, I, I think uh, it's going to start with the quarterback. Like you said, I think they've got a lot of pieces in place. I think they've found the running back. Uh, you know, you look at the, the scoring numbers, what's interesting about that, I mean, you hear that uh, and say, man, they, they were firing on all cylinders this year. But I think it was a situational thing. You know, when they would get in a situation uh, where they're in a tight football game, you know, they need to convert on a third down. They just couldn't find the play call often enough. You know, in, in games like the South Carolina game, obviously, um, was a, a prime example of a game where the offense just came out flat. So, um, you know, but I, I think um, if they can figure out quarterback, I think that the recruiting they've done has just been at such a high level. They're going to be able to plug in players that fans have not heard of yet that are going to be high-caliber football players. Uh, they just need that spark. They need the right person calling plays and the right person, uh, you know, handling the ball at quarterback to make that offense go. 18 before the hour live at Chick-fil-A as promised. Here's Clemson coach Dabo Sweeney. We're, of course, getting ready for the national championship. We'll get Dave's take on that game coming up, of course, on Monday night. With or without Lane Kiffin in the press box, pretty well tell you he ain't going to be there. And no matter what he wants to do, Mr. Saban says we're not interested in pursuing that. So he will not be there. But... The national championship game is up and coming and ready to roll, coming up again on Monday night. Here's Dabo Sweeney it was asked about players leaving early out of programs, and Dabo Sweeney had this to say on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Huge. What he says doesn't get hurt in any game. So if you're going to have that mentality, you will just not even come back out and play your senior season. So says Dabo Sweeney. So national championship game, big guy. Break it down for me. We won't talk again until next Wednesday when it's all said and done. So Alabama, Clemson, do the Tigers have anything in the tank this year for Alabama? You know what? I tend to think just after watching what I saw the other night, I, I think Clemson wins this football game. You know, of course, uh, you have to take that with a grain of salt because I didn't exactly win the uh, banana pudding last week or anything. But uh, <laughs> from what I've seen and what I saw out of both teams, um, you know, I think I think Clemson's going to win it. And I, I just I don't see being able to put in a new offensive coordinator. You know, nine days before the game, unless you've really been planning in advance for that. Um, I, I don't see that working. I, I think Alabama's offense um, has sputtered a little bit. I, I think the game that worked so well against Washington, they're going to have a tough time doing that against the front seven of Clemson. And on the flip side, I, I think Clemson has too many ways to attack that defense 
they're going to score points, and Alabama's going to have to outscore them. Uh, they had the parts and pieces last year to do that. I just I don't know they do this year. I, I think Clemson wins that game. Kiffin and all the scenarios, this is a huge disruption for the Alabama team? It has to be. It, it really, I don't see any, any way that it's not. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. They've got a good collection of players there. And, uh, you know, but sometimes when you give second chances and you, when you have people on with uh, your stuff with the history, um, you know, you end up you end up getting burned, and that might be what happens here. But it remains to be seen. Alabama certainly has enough talent to overcome this and, and win the game, especially if they get off to a good start. But you know, we'll we'll see. I think it's going to be a wonderful football game. I think you're looking at 42-35, uh, high scoring, entertaining, kind of like the Rose Bowl the other day, but with a lot more at stake uh, with the national championship. Tongue in cheek, Dabo Sweeney may be cheering on Lane Kiffin, saying, "You go, boy, keep it stirred up down in Tuscaloosa." It's a t- they could take the focus off of us, getting ready for this game, and all the the uh, soap opera scenario going on in and around Lane Kiffin and, and Nick Saban right now. But uh, I'd say Saban will horn them back in and rope them back in. And say, folks, we got a football game to get ready. There's a really good team we're going to be playing on Monday night. So Alabama and Clemson for the national championship. Kiffin says, "I'm going to be in the press box." Saban says, "No, no, you're not going to be in the press box." Again, the quote of the day says, "Saban says, quote, not something we're interested in pursuing." Having Lane Kiffin in the press box during the national championship. We'll take a quick break, come right back. We'll come back, talk NFL playoffs. My boys have limped into the playoffs. The Raiders. We'll talk about that coming up next year. We're talking to Dave Anji from the Johnson City Press. We're talking sports here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. How long would that be? Yeah, it'll work. We have a three-minute break, and we'll just keep it at the top. You got thir- I got 13 minutes, is that correct? Yeah. No, I got 13.38. All right, let's set it. Tell me when I hit top of the top of the 12 here, and we'll set it for 12 minutes even. <laughs> Raiders in Houston, Detroit and Seattle, and on Sunday it's Dolphins in Pittsburgh and Giants in Green Bay. That ain't the NFL. No. Yep. That's exactly right. Look at the difference. One game goes from a two seat at home to a five seat on the road. Yep. But as Howard Cosell would say, that's why you play the game, which is a terrible Cosell invasion. <laughs> so cross between Forrest Gump and Howard Cosell. That's why you play the game. Pee Wee Herman. Lord have mercy. We'll talk a little science little hoops, a little high school basketball, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big game last night. Mm-hmm. Seconds. We'll have, uh, the top and shows over. Back with the Tom Hiller Sports Show again on Facebook Live and also here on AM790 WTV. Charles Stanley coming up at the top of the hour with 
preaching and teaching is only he can do. We're talking to our buddy Dave Angie from the Johnson City Press. NFL, here we go. Game number, we'll, we'll save out next or last. Game one on, or game two on Saturday. Detroit 9 and 6 in Seattle against the Seahawks. NFC wildcard game at 8.15 Saturday evening. Seahawks 10, 5 and 1. Lions 9 and 6. Detroit or Seattle at home? I'm inclined to take Seattle. You know, I think that was a, a big loss for Detroit last week to lose home field advantage in a game against the Packers. And that's a tough place to go play. I just don't think Detroit's got what it takes to get that done. Sunday in the cold in Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. The Steelers 11 and 5, taking on the Dolphins at 10 and 6. 1 o'clock kickoff in the cold. It's going to be cold here, colder about eight hours to the north. Steelers or the Dolphins in Pittsburgh? Got to take the Steelers. They, they've won too many of these games over the years for me to, to pick against them, especially at home. And uh, you know, I think that running game is really going to take its toll. To 440 kickoff on Sunday afternoon. The Packers at Lambeau. I think we said it's going to be eight degrees kickoff on Sunday in Green Bay. They're nine and six. Giants, cold weather team coming to town 11 and five. Does Eli have anything for the Packers or is Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay too hot right now? I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this, that cold weather plays against the Packers, I think, in this game. And I think that the Giants get it done, not necessarily because of Eli, as much as because of that running game. The Packers have been using a, a wide receiver to run the ball. And you know, I think they're going to get exposed this week. It's going to be too hard to, to run that passing game um, and be able to beat the Giants. I think the Giants have what it takes. They've been red hot going into the playoffs. I don't think they get it done. Got the Giants on an upset on the road at Green Bay. You got the Steelers, the Giants, Seattle, and of course, the Raiders. 12 and 4 in Houston with a third string quarterback, Connor Cook. Del Rio says we're going to go with him. And we're going to use McGloin as a backup who was way out of his comfort zone Sunday in Denver. So can Connor Cook lead this football team to, to win in Houston? You know, I think they might be able to. Um, you know, from what I saw in Houston against Tennessee the other day, you know, they've got quarterback problems of their own. So it's not like they really have an edge, uh, too much of an edge at that uh, position. I guess Osweiler might be the guy getting started. You know, he's got the physical tools. We've seen it before, but he's going to have to put a lot together in the playoffs. Uh, I'm not sure that happens. I think this is a close game. The one key for Oakland will be finding a way to get the ball to those running backs, you know, Washington and Murray especially. And, of course, uh, getting Amari Cooper involved uh, in the offense, and you might see some things where they run some sweeps uh, just to get him the ball on the handoff and, and get it in his hands and let him try to make some plays in space, um, You know, especially if that passing game is faltering early in the game. Uh, we, we might end up seeing that. But they need to find a way uh, to get those running backs going and uh, they have a chance to score some points and, and maybe win that game. I think it's kind of a toss-up. Uh, I'll go ahead and take Oakland in that game just because I, I just don't have any confidence at all in the Texans. It has nothing to do with the fact you're my friends. It's the fact it's, it's purely a, a game gut check pick. So, in fact, in fact, we're buddies has nothing to do with it. So what you tell me? It's a business decision right here. <laughs> it's a business decision. And even, even saying that, I'm going to have to take the Raiders because, you know, Houston to me just, um, you know, I watched them lay an egg against Kansas City in the playoffs last year. That would be the worst playoff performance I've ever seen. So, you know, that plays into it as well. Titans have a good run, a strong finish, and a great springboard for 2017 for the Titans. They had a good year. Yeah, I definitely think so. You know, you look at uh, losing Mariota the way they did. Um, that, the key to them is that offensive line is so good. And they need to keep that group together. You know, they've got running backs to run behind it, and that takes so much pressure off the, you know, off the quarterback position. Uh, they need to get some receivers, you know, big play guys. They, they've got a couple. Um, you know, Sharp had a big year. They had a couple guys that, that did well in the passing game, of course. So, they're at tight end. Uh, the defensive secondary is an area I think they're going to key on in the draft, uh, you know, and try to shore up the defense now to catch up with the offense a little bit. And I think that's a playoff team this year. I really did. You know, I'm a guy that was guilty of not thinking much of uh, Malarkey when they retired him, you know, when they, when they retained him after he was the interim coach. Uh, but he did a tremendous job this year. I, I think that team has uh, the potential to be really fun to watch next season and the potential to make the playoffs as well. Five minutes left in the show. Let's switch gears with Donna Dave Angie, the sports writer of the John City Press. High school basketball, a big rivalry game last night. You covered Science Hill and Dobbins. Been up. Tis the season. Everybody's in the conference play now. And uh, it's going to be a great run in the Big Seven and the Three Rivers Conference. It's going to be a heck of a conference as far as the, the conference race. What was your take about what you saw last night and, and just high school basketball in general right now? I think the Science Hill team that was on this night is what everybody was expecting to see from the beginning of the season. And for whatever uh, whatever reason, we just haven't seen that out of them. But 
um, you know, with the amount of depth that they have, they were finally able to really get the 32 minutes of sustained, sustained um, effort and energy. Uh, you can start on the defensive end for them. It created a lot of transition opportunities. Um, you know, they were just overwhelming. And I, I think if they play that way, um, there's really nobody in that Big Seven conference that's going to be able to withstand um, you know, the, the pressure they were able to put on teams and uh, the amount of talent, the amount of length they have, um, you know, coming and just makes it tough, you know. You could see it last night. They kind of wore Dobbins coming down. I think uh, through three quarters, Dobbins been in their 20 turnovers in that, in that game. And, you know, it was a, a 19, 20 point game after three, and then Science Hill kind of closed it out strong. So, um, you know, yeah, that's the Science Hill team. You know, that's the template now that they can go back to. They can go back to that film and say, you know, if they hit a wall at some point, they say, this is the way we need to play. This is what we do. And um, I think it probably clicked for the players. So um, it was about this time. Last year, uh, maybe a little bit later into January, when Science Hill really got rolling, um, and they really started playing well, and that led them all the way to state. I don't know, you know, if that's in the cards this year, uh, but I do think that they they could have turned the corner. And we'll see for sure against Tennessee High Friday how they come out of that one. But uh, definitely a big performance. Three Rivers Conference. You got Elizabeth and Solomon uh, East, uh, Unicoi County, Solomon South. They're all in the fray, Happy Valley. So that's going to be a great run on the boys' side in the uh, in the Three Rivers Conference. So, uh, tis the season, as we said, to get into high school basketball, and, and it's uh, you know, it's 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 here, and this is what you want. The conference races, everything I'm hearing, the team to watch this year is Gate City. That Gate City boys team, apparently, uh, Scotty Vermillion's got a heck of a team over in Gate City. Definitely so. You know, they had um, some hard-fought losses there in the Arby's against really really good uh, competition. You've got to remember, that's a single eight. You know, that's that's unbelievable. Um, I think once they get back in league play, I'd hate to play them. There and, and the other teams are going to be facing in Southwest Virginia. I, I think it's a state championship team up there as long as nobody gets hurt. Um, you know, look at Zach Irvin and Matt McClung and, and those guys, and they, they're kind of the anchors and they get a lot of the hit. But man, there's a lot of good basketball players on that team, and you know, they, they proved it. You've got to have a complete team to play well in the Army, so, and they were toe to toe uh, with some, some big schools and big squads um, from other states, you know, that are uh, at the top of the heat. So, uh, just, I think anybody that doesn't have an allegiance to a basketball team around here and wants to get out and watch some good high school basketball, uh, slide up there to Gate City and watch a few games because that's going to be something else. There you go. And we appreciate it very much. You can be with us here again, our buddy Dave Andre and John C. Press. What are we going to be reading about in the next couple of days? Ooh, Milligan does tomorrow. We're getting back in the swing of Milligan. I think athletes are kind of getting back on campus now after their holiday break. And, uh, you know, basketball, uh, they started back last night, the men and women. Uh, a couple games and they're playing at home I believe this weekend you know they got some other stuff uh, kind of in the works so uh, definitely Milligan notes and then obviously Friday night be over there for the game with, uh, with Science Hill and Tennessee High. There you go. Good job my friend. Thanks. See you next week. Yes absolutely. Get you some lunch. That's our buddy Dave Audrey in his lumberjack shirt. I like it. So he said I'm hunkering down for the cold and he's right. It's going to be single digits in here on Sunday night Monday morning here in the tri It's our first Arctic front of the year coming in here, and apparently it's going to be a pretty good one. Hey, we're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours, and thanks to our guest. You heard from Dabo Sweeney, the head football coach at Clemson, Tennessee men's basketball coach Rick Barnes. You heard from Greg Salyer talking Major League Baseball, and you heard just now from Dave Angie from the Johnson City Press, and, of course, our buddy, producer extraordinaire, our buddy Ben Foy. Appreciate him very much. We're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. We'll be back in the saddle tomorrow on the road to Champion Chevrolet on the Bristol Motor Mile Johnson City. You can go back and watch and listen to the show again on Facebook Live. Just go to TomDotterSports.com. You can go back and watch and listen to the show. We certainly appreciate those folks doing that. And certainly want to say thanks to Chick Play for allowing us to come and broadcast as we do every Wednesday here in the store. So, for our guest, we do appreciate him again one more time. We will rejoin you tomorrow at Champion Chevrolet at 11 o'clock in the Bristol Motor Mile in Johnson City. Dr. Charles Stanley coming up next. And stay warm. As Ben said, temperature is going to be falling throughout the day. And our Arctic front, cold front, snow is coming in here starting uh, tonight. It's going to get colder. It looks like the moisture is going to roll in here tomorrow through Friday and stay cold through the first of the week. We're out of here. Thank you very much. We're gone and so long from Chick-fil-A and North Johnson City. So long, everybody. Something went wrong because I still got 10 seconds on the clock. Oh, so...
Okay, because I, cause I timed it when you told me I hit the timer, so anyway. Yeah, hang on just a second. All right, Facebook folks, again, thank you very much. Again, share us and like us on Facebook, TomTaylorSports.com, and uh, we'll re rejoin Mike for a little two-minute sports report, and we will see you tomorrow right here at 11 o'clock from 11 to 1 at uh, Champion Chevrolet in the Bristol Motor Mile in Johnson City.